the face frame out of the clamps. We're not too bad. Very slight discrepancies we'll have to clean up. But we'll trim off our ends first now. So we'll get our knife in our knife wall and put our square up. And we'll just reinforce that a bit. And again, this is a another way, another thing where you you can do this in multiple ways. You can do this on the table saw or the miter saw. But I'm going to do it by hand. I'm going to just reinforce that on the waist side. Get a nice clean line. And just follow the line. Side, which is the joinery side, the non-show side. I'm going to take a, a few light passes with a finely set plane, just to even that up. bottom edges get the same treatment. The drawer slides that I have selected for these are 12 inch full extension drawer slides with a soft close on it and they have to fit flush with this inside face. But if I put my side on there flush like so that's going to be pretty awkward looking with this much hangover here. So we want to space it out here. Now, you can go by this dimension and then make a piece to fit to fur that out if you want, if you want to mill it up afterwards. Myself, I have got some pieces of walnut that I milled up that weren't good because of, well, the sapwood and the hardwood and the knots. And they're just ugly pieces of wood. So instead of making them scrap, what I am going to do is I'm going to set them on there and my side will butt up to that. And that gives me a nice little reveal. Now, obviously, these are going to go in a different orientation. But, for measurement purposes, I can put that on the edge of my piece there. And on the edge of my piece down at the bottom. It's got a little bit of a bow in it, but I'm not worried about the middle right now. Just worried about the edge of this, and I'm going to put a mark there. And the same at the bottom. I've got my marking gauge set at a half inch, and another piece of scrap. I'm just going to make a mark on there. I'm going to take my mark here and line it up with my mark there on the back of the face frame. And 
where the other mark is. It's on the back this time. I'm going to make a knife mark. So from this knife mark to this knife mark is the same distance as between the marks we set out. And we'll just take all of those knife marks and we'll transfer them all the way around. So from this knife mark to this knife mark is the dimensions of the inside of our cabinet. So we'll come a half inch past that one. Make a mark. And that will give us our length that we have to cut off at. And this cut is extremely non-critical. So we're just going to go for it. We need four of those now. These pieces are going to be spacers for the sides of the cabinet to hold them apart at a precise distance. So the real critical part here is where this shoulder lies. So with them all clamped together, I'll mark one side. mark the other. I've got my marks transferred all the way around. I've got a marking gauge set for half the width. So I'm just going to mark these. And we'll just cut the waste off. Not a critical cut again. So as long as we make it into a kind of a half lap. Just follow the line. Just use the bench hook and a cross cut saw to cut out the rest of that waste. So now what we've accomplished is four pieces with a half lap on it with the insides of the shoulders each exactly the same distance apart. 
So what I'm going to do is cut a little dovetail on each one of these. And when I got my sides to go together, then it will help space it apart at the proper distance. One at the front, one at the back, top and bottom. If I take a square and set it at seven inches, and it's got a one inch blade, and if I make a line here, and a line here around the corner, If I take a ruler and join those, I've got a one in seven slope, and I can now take. Now I've got a 1 and 7 slope marked. Perfect for dovetails. Now I can just take my marking gauge and I'm just going to go from the corner well, These don't exactly have to be gorgeous dovetails. Now that we've got our dovetails literally hacked out of there, and this is not a show joint, this is a functional joint, so, you know, it's a utilitarian joint in this case, so we don't really have to worry about too much about the aesthetics of it, it'll never be seen. We've got to take our sides, and in the back, we have to make a little rabbit to accept plywood panel that it will be the back panel. So on the inside, on the back of each one, we have to make a little dado. I'm going to do mine on the table saw, I think. You could do it with a router. You could do it with a rabbiting and filster plane. So I'm going to just bring that up to the height of the plywood. I'm going to put the inside of the back. On the fence. So we have to make our second cut. Now, common safety practice would say, don't let this cut off piece get trapped between the fence and the blade, because it could shoot back. Common sense says, don't stand where it's going to kick back. If that piece comes out, be off to the side.
and that came out very nice. How wide do we make our back? We don't know yet. So I spent some time awkwardly getting these braces put in here. You see I just got them clamped against the shoulder. And our dovetails up here. We don't have a heck of a pile of wood right there. So I might bring those, pair those in a little bit. You know, it's a little bit awkward getting it all together like that. But I'm pretty sure I can remove one at a time without it exploding. And just pair those edges down just a little bit. I'll just take a little bit off of it. I'm just going to freehand just a bit off of there. And just kind of follow the same slope. Once we got that done, and make sure that this face is flush with this face, I can feel a tiny bit out there. We'll mark out the dovetail. They're all different. We will label them. And we'll call that one A. Well, with our sockets marked out and labeled, we can drop some horizontal lines here. And we can take our marking gauge that is still set and mark the depth.
we've got our sockets cut. You've got to be very careful. This part right here is very delicate. To the point that I blew a couple of them out. I had to save the piece and glue it back in there. Well, what I did on subsequent ones is I took a utility knife and when I had my saw cut I put it in there and drove it down. And put it in there and drove it down. And that seemed to do it. One thing we can do while the glue dries is dry fit the other end in and we can get a measurement for our back. And mine looks like 18 and 5 sixteenths here. pretty darn good. So what I have here is leftover styrofoam insulation from building. And I'm going to cut that to the inside measurement that I just measured. So now, when I do my glue up, I take these pieces of styrofoam and stick one in here and one at the bottom. Because they're cut on the table saw and square, they will stop it from racking this way. Oh, naturally the memory card fills up. Okay, I wasn't going to stop. Not with glue on the way. So you can see I got her all trussed up like the Marquis de Sade. I had a little bit of racking in it, so a little strap on it. But, ugh. The back is glued in and I just tacked it in with some one inch 18 gauge nails, but uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Oh, well, that's the basic cabinet then. Still a long way to go, but cool weather coming. It'll be slow going. Uh, I've left about a, a quarter inch reveal on the the face frame, but it's all glued together. Pretty fancy for a potato bin, but rain and cool coming up, so time to take a break. <laughs>